Hello there, welcome back to my channel and today's topic is renal clearance test. One of the confusing part of the renal physiology, students even find it difficult to define as to what is renal clearance but don't worry, watch this video till the end and you will get to know as to what to write in the exam if at all renal clearance test is asked. Remember that renal clearance test can be asked along with a long essay, usually it is clubbed with the glomerular filtration rate and its regulation. Renal clearance test can be also asked separately as a short note and there is a chance that it can be also asked as a short answer, a two or a three marker question. So let's begin the renal clearance test without any delay. So what we are going to learn in this video which is going to help you in your exams is let's begin with a brief introduction because introduction is very important in order to understand the definition okay then we will get to know as to what is the formula for the calculation of the renal clearance test and remember that the renal clearance test is basically used to calculate two things one is it is used for the estimation of the gfr in order to estimate gfr we do two clearances one is called as inulin clearance remember it's not insulin it is inulin clearance another one is creatinine clearance and we also can estimate the renal blood flow and that is done using one more clearance which is, which is called as the PAH clearance. Of course, there are two more clearance less important than the inulin, creatinine and the PAH clearance. These are called as osmotic clearance and the free water clearance. I hope you can read them by yourself. So this is the thing which we are going to learn in this video. So let's have a brief introduction. So different substances in the kidney are going to act differently. Uh, there could be substances like this is our glomerulus and this is our tubule. There could be substances which are just filtered and these substances these are neither reabsorbed nor those are secreted. So these are freely filtered and they are excreted. Now if we find such a kind of substance, such a kind of substance will be very helpful for us to get to know as to what is the GFR. There could be also substances which are of course freely filtered and also reabsorbed. There could be substances which are again freely filtered and completely reabsorbed. Here they are partially reabsorbed. Okay. One best example of such a substance is our glucose. Next there could be substances which are completely filtered or freely filtered and they are also secreted. Now such a kind of substance we can use for the estimation of the renal blood flow and there could be substances which are filtered and they are partially reabsorbed as well as secreted and there could be also substances which are not at all filtered but they are only secreted okay so these two kinds of substances like which are freely filtered neither reabsorbed nor secreted these are the one which are used for the estimation of the gfr and there is one more group which is also freely filtered as well as secreted such a kind of substance is used for the estimation of renal blood flow so definition let's understand the definition in order to understand the definition we have to break this definition up so first and foremost thing that we are supposed to understand in the definition is that it is defined as the volume of plasma okay how much is the volume of plasma from which a substance is completely cleared or it is removed it is removed by whom by which organ it is removed by kidneys and it has to be removed in per unit time okay now for example there is glomerulus and in this glomerulus there is plasma okay plasma is nothing but a component of the blood so from this plasma there is a volume of plasma from which the substance is filtered into the tubules okay and then this plasma afferent arteriole glomerulus efferent arteriole then efferent arteriole is going to continue as the peritubular capillary let's say this is the peritubular ca capillary now in the peritubular from the peritubular capillary also the substance is secreted so how much is the volume of the plasma from which a substance is completely cleared by the kidney in a given unit of time so that means whenever i am expressing the renal clearance always it is expressed as volume of plasma 
per unit time. So volume of plasma is always given in ml and the time here is always per minute. Okay. So remember that the SI unit of renal clearance is always ml per minute. Now if it is ml per minute, how are we going to define it? We are going to define it. ml is nothing but volume. So volume of what? Volume of the plasma from which a substance is completely cleared okay by whom by the kidneys in a given unit of time and that unit of time is minutes i hope this definition is crystal clear for you people now what is the significance of this renal clearance see remember that renal clearance is important to assess first and foremost the glomerular filtration rate Second, we can also get to know the renal plasma flow and the renal blood flow. And at last, we will also get to know the osmotic and the free water clearance ability. So among these three, here in this video, I'm going to tell you regarding the glomerular filtration rate, okay, regarding the renal plasma flow and the renal blood flow. So what is the formula which we use for the renal clearance? The formula for renal clearance is clearance of a substance that is X is equal to the concentration of that substance in the urine multiplied by the urine flow rate which is given in ml per minute divided by the concentration of that substance in the plasma. This is very easy. So we usually write it as U V divided by P. So the renal clearance tests which are used for the estimation of GFR, the first and foremost renal clearance test that we use is what is called as inulin clearance test. Now if at all they don't ask you the renal clearance test, directly the question is inulin clearance test, even then it is our responsibility to define as to what is inulin clearance. So what is inulin clearance? Again the same thing, volume of the plasma which is completely cleared off which substance here of inulin in per unit time again you can use by the kidney. So this volume of plasma which is completely cleared of the inulin in each unit of time it equals the volume of plasma which is filtered per unit of time and the volume of plasma which is filtered per unit of time is nothing but our GFR. So that means the clearance of inulin is equal to the glomerular filtration rate. Now why we are telling this? Because inulin has got very important properties. Now what are the properties of the inulin? First and foremost property of the inulin is that it is freely filtered. Second property is that it is neither reabsorbed nor it is secreted. Third property is that it is neither metabolized nor stored in the kidney. Very important property which we use it on the patients is that it is not toxic and I can easily estimate its concentration both in the plasma as well as urine. The most important property which helps us to estimate the GFR by using inulin is that inulin is freely filtered, inulin is neither reabsorbed, inulin is nor secreted this is the most important property that is why the clearance of inulin is equivalent to the glomerular filtration rate so the amount which is filtered here whatever amount is filtered that amount is excreted so whatever is filtered from the glomerulus because it is neither reabsorbed nor it is secreted the same amount is coming out of the renal tubule that means the amount filtered is equal to the amount excreted the amount filtered is what that is nothing but gfr multiplied by the plasma concentration of inulin the amount excreted is what urine concentration of inulin multiplied by the velocity of the urine so that means gfr will be equal to u into v divided by p so what is this gfr this gfr is nothing but clearance of the inulin as simple as that now instead of inulin we can use one more compound and that is what is called as creatinine and the test we do is what is called as creatinine clearance test so why we have to use creatinine instead of inulin why because inulin has to be given from outside that is it has to be given exogenously so creatinine is a is a compound which is produced inside the body 
So the first and foremost and most important advantage of creatinine is that it does not require an intravenous infusion. I have to keep on continuously giving inulin from outside in an IV infusion manner. But creatinine has that advantage because it is produced inside the body. We need not give a intravenous infusion because creatinine is endogeneously produced. That is, it is produced inside the body. What it is a product of? It's a product of muscle metabolism. It is also freely filtered by the glomerulus. It is also neither reabsorbed, but a very small amount of creatinine is secreted. And concentration in the plasma as well as urine for creatinine is also quite stable. That's why it is more widely used for GFR estimation clinically. So each time a patient comes to me, I cannot infuse the inulin to him in order to calculate the GFR. It's always better to go for such a compound which is produced endogeneously. So only disadvantage of creatinine is that it's not a perfect marker for GFR. Why? Because a little bit of creatinine is secreted into the tubules. So when little bit of creatinine is secreted into tubules, what is going to happen to the value of the GFR? The value of the GFR which we are going to obtain will be slightly more compared to that of the GFR. Okay, but we can ignore that and we can go ahead with the creatinine in order to calculate the glomerular filtration rate. So two tests, one is inulin clearance, another one is creatinine clearance. Both of them are used for the estimation of glomerular filtration rate. Next is the renal clearance tests which are used to assess the renal plasma flow. And the compound we are going to use to get to know the renal plasma flow is what is called as PAH. So what's the meaning of PAH? PAH means para-aminohypuric acid and this test is called as para-aminohypuric acid clearance test. Now in order to estimate the renal plasma flow, we are going to use the FIX principle and you might all be knowing that what does the FIX principle say? FIX principle says the amount of a given substance which is taken up by the kidney per unit time divided by arteriovenous difference. Arteriovenous difference in the renal blood vessels. So it is renal arteriovenous difference for that substance. And the amount of substance which is taken up by the kidney means amount of substance which is entering into the tubules and it is excreted in the urine. So amount of substance taken up by the kidney per unit time can be easily calculated by calculating the urine concentration of PAH and multiplying it with the velocity of the flow of the urine. So this I have to divide by arterial PAH concentration and minus venous PAH concentration. Got this point? Remember one more very important point that para-aminohypuric acid is filtered very little but it is secreted more it is secreted more remember that 90 percentage of the para amino hippuric acid from the plasma is coming back into the renal tubules and it is excreted that means hardly 10 percent which is very negligible amount is entering back into the venous circulation so in order to simplify the formula, I can clearly ignore the venous concentration of the PAH. Why? Because the amount of PAH entering into the venous circulation is very, very less. So at that point of time, in order to calculate the clearance of the PAH, I can use a formula which is UPAH multiplied by V divided by arterial PAH concentration or to be more specific I can write it as the plasma PAH concentration why because almost 90 percentage of the PAH is going to enter into the tubules so negligible amount of PAH will be going into the venous circulation so I am removing the venous circulation and I am simplifying this formula as U multiplied by V divided by plasma PAH concentration. So that is what I am going to explain here. So why do we use PAH? We use PAH because we need a substance which is almost completely excreted from the body or from the kidneys. Okay, Whose arterial and venous concentrations should be measurable? 
it should not be metabolized it should not be stored or it should not be produced by the kidney and in itself it shouldn't affect the renal plasma flow so pah is fitting in all these it is sticking all these criteria that is why i am going to use pah now such a substance is our para amino hippuric acid very small amount of para amino hippuric acid is filtered but a large amount is secreted so in a single circulation almost 90 percentage of the para amino hippuric acid is ex excreted that means its extraction ratio by the kidney is high the amount of pah ex extracted by the kidney is almost 90 percent that is why we calculate re renal plasma flow how renal plasma flow is now nothing but equivalent to the clearance of the pah we just calculate the renal plasma flow by dividing the amount of PAH in the urine by plasma PAH levels. Okay. Also, we have to multiply it by velocity of the urine. Okay. Why we are doing that? Because the amount of PAH which is entering into the venous circulation is negligible. That's why we are ignoring the venous concentration. So, the PAH which is obtained by such a method by ignoring the venous concentration is what is called as effective renal plasma flow. So the clearance of the PAH which is obtained by ignoring the venous concentration of the PAH is what is called as effective renal plasma flow. As I have told you how it is calculated urine PAH multiplied by the velocity of the flow of the urine divided by the plasma concentration of the PAH which is equivalent to the clearance of the PAH. Clearance of the PAH is equivalent to effective renal plasma flow. For example, let's say the concentration of the PAH in urine is 14 milligrams per ml. The urine flow is 0.9 ml per minute and the concentration of the PAH in the plasma is 0 0.02 milligrams per ml. So when I put all these value, I am going to get the effective renal plasma flow and the effective renal plasma flow by putting these values is coming to be somewhere around 630 ml per minute. Average value is around 625 ml per minute. So what I have calculated now is effective renal plasma flow. Now let's say I want to convert this effective renal plasma flow into actual renal plasma flow. That is effective. So I want to convert this into actual renal plasma flow. So I am going to use what is called as the extraction ratio. This is not ratio, this is ratio. So the formula which I am going to use to calculate the actual renal plasma flow is effective renal plasma flow divided by the extraction ratio. How much did I tell you as the extraction of the PAH by the kidneys? I have told you that 90% of the PAH in a single circulation is extracted by the kidney. That means it is entering into the tubules and it is excreted in the urine. So that is why the extraction ratio will be 0.9. How much was the effective renal plasma flow? Effective renal plasma flow was 630. So when I do this division, I'll get the effective renal plasma flow, which will come to 700 ml per minute. How much was the effective renal plasma flow? It was 630 because I was ignoring the venous concentration here. So when I calculate the actual renal plasma flow, I got it as 700 ml per minute. So once I have got the actual renal plasma flow, what I can do is I can easily now calculate the renal blood flow by using this formula, which says that renal blood flow is equivalent to renal plasma flow multiplied by one divided by one minus hematocrit. So how much was the renal plasma flow? 700 ml, one divided by one minus hematocrit, that is 0.55. If I consider hematocrit as 45, I'll take it as 0.45. So how much I'm getting the renal blood flow? I'm getting the renal blood flow as 1 to 73 ml per minute. I hope you understood this concept. So what all did we learn in this video is we started with the definition. Always remember the definition by remembering ml per minute. So when I say ml, it is the volume of plasma which is cleared off from a particular substance 
by the kidney per unit of time that is the definition of the renal clearance then we understood the formula for the calculation of the renal clearance and then we understood that this renal clearance can be used for GFR estimation as well as for the estimation of the renal blood flow. For GFR estimation, we have two tests, inulin clearance and creatinine clearance. The only difference is that inulin has to be given exogenously, but the values obtained with inulin clearance are more accurate. Creatinine clearance, the advantage is that we need not give an IV infusion because creatinine is produced inside the body. But the values which are obtained by creatinine clearance for GFR estimation are little bit higher. But still clinically, we are going to use creatinine clearance for the estimation of GFR. Then for the estimation of renal blood flow, we are going to use paraminohypuric acid. By using paraminohypuric acid, first we are going to calculate effective renal plasma flow. Once we calculate the effective renal plasma flow, this effective renal plasma flow divided by the extraction ratio, which is 0.9 for the paraminohypuric acid, we are going to calculate the actual renal plasma flow. And once we get the value of the actual renal plasma flow, we are going to calculate the renal blood flow. I hope you have understood the concept behind the renal clearance test and what is to be written if this question is asked in the exam. If this video is helpful for, for you, do share this video among your friends, subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thanks a lot for watching.